Hi guys, it's Paula and I hope you are doing well. I'm not wearing much makeup right now, which means that today is the dust collectors. Get ready with me. This is a video I do one day a month with my friend Verity. She is Red Dirt and Stardust over on her channel. I will have it linked down below, of course. And what we do is we pull out some makeup. I've been going with five pieces of makeup that have been getting a little dusty in the office, haven't been touched in a while, and I use them in a look and I try to talk about something relevant, <laughs> give you guys a little life update, and that's what we're doing today. So I have pulled five items and we are going to jump right into it. What I have on my face currently is foundation, concealer, cream bronzer, cream blush, cream highlight, a little bit of powder bronzer and some under eye setting powder and I did my brows. When all I have is foundation and brows, I kind of scare myself. I joke about this all the time. I feel like that Muppet with the brows, I can't remember his name, but he's a blue Muppet that looks kind of like an eagle. I feel like him when I have my brows on like this and no other makeup because it is just a lot. But anyways, we should start with the makeup so that I feel less intimidating and angry looking. Um, most of the products I've pulled for today's Get Ready With Me is from my spring shop, my stash that I did with Too Much Tosh. We collaborated on a video where we talked about our top five palettes for spring and we did a shop, my stash. So almost everything I've pulled is from that video. The first product I'm gonna talk about is not from that video though, that is this. This is the Makeup Forever number 13 Aqua Cream. This recently came to mind because this was featured in my graveyard products video, which was all about the products that I've had in projects but didn't meet my goal on, and I was talking about this in that video, so I thought I'll use it today. So. I'm gonna start with this. This is a cream eye base. What I was saying in that video, I cannot say it enough, is that this can look amazing or can look horrible, but once it dries down, it does not move unless you use a serious eye makeup remover. So try to get it on right the first time so that you don't have it looking horrible all day long. That fact alone has deterred me from pulling from this. I did open it up and take a look at it this morning and it's a little bit dry, so I don't know if that will make it easier to use or more difficult to use, but let's just get into it. Okay, so basically I'm just gonna take this cream base. This is just a beautiful kind of champagne -y gold shade, like a light gold. And I'm just going to apply that all over my eyelid. I'm going to use my pinky finger to do that. I did already prime my eyelids with some Urban Decay Primer Potion in Eden. So this is like a second primer. You know, I'm getting to an age where, you know, I don't have the eyelids of a 13 year old anymore. I gotta be careful about what I do with them and what I put on them because uh, I have to work to hide my the age of my eyelids. And if I do something wrong, it really tells you how old they are. I feel like I got a bald spot right there where it's not really sticking. Oh, you can't see anyways, cause the light. All right, let me see if I can get it on this side. See, I don't know. Having issues. Did I just manage to make my eyelids look older? See, that's exactly what I'm trying to avoid. And I feel like... <sighs> I don't know. I feel like my eyelids look more wrinkly than they did before. <sighs> this is so frustrating. 
you know what? I don't have anywhere to go today other than to pick my kids up from the babysitter. So we're just gonna ride it out for the day. And if I hate the way my eyelids look by the end of the night, this is going into my declutter basket. I've had this for years and maybe I just can't make it work. I don't know. Maybe you guys have a tip in the comments that you could leave me for how you make this work, but I feel like my eyelids look way older and way crinklier than they did five minutes ago. All right, for eyeshadow today, I'm going to be using my Lorac Mega Pro 4. This is my first time ever using this palette. I've had it for a while. I've never used it even once, I don't think. Just watched a couple of shades. This is what it looks like right here. I think this is a great spring palette, like I said in that um, spring shot my stash video. I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I will figure that out. I'll figure something out. I'm also going to grab the light peachy shade from my Pan That palette. I am working to hit pan on that, and I really cannot afford to take a day off from using it. So I'm gonna also be throwing that in my crease after I put on a brow bone highlight. For my brow bone highlight, I'm just gonna go with the shade Foam. This one down here, it seems like the most likely candidate for a shimmery brow bone for my skin tone. And I'm gonna take my little Sonia Kashuk brush. How are you guys doing? I hope you guys are doing well. I've been doing okay, been busy. Life is busy, spring is here. The trees are all flowering. There are a few things that make me happier in life than a tree that flowers in spring. I am so happy for this week. And like by next week, it'll be over. But this week, all of the trees in our neighborhood are blooming and it just makes my heart so happy. I don't understand why the good Lord couldn't give us trees that bloomed all year long, cause that would make me even happier. But I live for this week to come every year and it's here. So I'm in a good mood. You can't, you can't take me down. It's gonna be really hard to knock me down because the trees are blooming outside and I'm happy. I'm also working from home today which until January was all I had been doing for about nine months, but since January, it's been a little weird to work from home. Oh wow, that's got a lot of base pigment. Not as shimmery as I thought it would be. Um, today is actually report card pickup from my schools and our district has allowed us to work from home today. So that's pretty cool. I've been trying to get some stuff done. I have a confession to make. I'm a bit of a procrastinator. I have, I don't wanna say I have bad time management skills because if I have a schedule, I can follow it. But if you leave me to my own devices, I will make bad choices. I will make bad choices with my time and I will procrastinate. I'm a procrastinator. I am the biggest procrastinator in the world. I get it from my father. He was a procrastinator. He is a procrastinator and I have clearly inherited that from him. And I have been giving myself a pep talk since yesterday. Like, come on, Paula, you got a whole day at home. You know, I think I have two meetings today and I've already done one. I only have like one more meeting today. It starts in a half an hour and I can make good use out of this time. The kids are at school. I could get stuff done. Am I getting stuff done? Mm. Not really. I really like this um, shade as a brow bone highlight. It is very brightening. Foam, I like you, foam. All right, I'm gonna go in with the um, peachy shade from my Pan That palette. So I feel like maybe, and I don't mean to call names or make assumptions about anybody watching this video, but I feel like maybe you are my people. Not only because you're subscribed to my channel and you support me and I thank you for it, but because if you're watching me right now, I'm guessing you're avoiding doing something that you should be doing too. And maybe I shouldn't be making assumptions like that. Maybe I'm completely wrong. Maybe you have gotten everything done and you have nothing left to do because you've done it all already. I cannot relate to that whatsoever. I have not done anything at all lately and nothing is done. And I watch YouTube and make YouTube videos to avoid doing the things that I need to do and should be doing. That is my confession for the day.
So I gave myself this huge pep talk yesterday saying, Paula, you're gonna make the most of the day. You're gonna get stuff done. You should make yourself a little checklist. Checklists are good. I do well with checklists. I haven't gotten around to making the checklist yet. <laughs> I am the worst. Um, I am so overwhelmed by this house right now. I cannot even begin to tell you, but what I, what I am having a problem with is I don't really even know where to start. Like I look around and I think, oh my gosh, this is too much. Let me just watch a couple of YouTube videos first and think about what I'm gonna do because I cannot deal with all that I'm looking at. I just, I don't know where everything goes anymore. The goal that I've been working towards for many years now is a place for everything and everything in its place. It is, I know that's cliche, but that saying makes so much sense to me. I mean, really, I can't think of anything that makes more sense than a saying like that. A place for everything and everything in its place. It's so simple. It's genius. I do not have a place for everything and everything is not in its place. And when I look at the stuff that's not in its place, I don't know what its place is. I think, here's a paper that my kids brought home from school two weeks ago. What is its place? Where do I put the kids' papers? I don't know. Here's a toy that came in the house last week from somewhere. Where does it go? I don't know. I'm struggling over here. Felt like there were little crumblies falling out and hitting my face. All right, I wanna keep this look very spring, and I hope I'm not about to screw that up, but I'm very intrigued by this shade called Spice right here, which sounds like a fall colored shade. Hopefully I could make it a spring colored shade. I don't know, but I gotta try it. I gotta see what the fuss is about with Spice, cause I am drawn to that shade very much. So anyways, let me know down below if I am right, and you are avoiding work by watching my video, or if I am ridiculously wrong and you have all your stuff together and you're just using your free time to watch this video. And I'm the only person on earth that procrastinates the way I do. I've been working on my Lorac uh, Pro palette, the first one, not this big guy, but the little guy in my Panners Pan project, and I've been falling in love with Lorac shadows all over again. I just think they are fabulous. I know not everybody likes them, but I think they have a lot of good qualities to them. And that's part of what made me want to pull for this palette today. So I'm just taking that spice shade and bringing it everywhere with my Makeup Geek Soft Dome Brush. And I'm gonna take a pencil brush and run that same shade on my lower lash line. I have not done my hair yet. I don't know if you could tell, but the hair has not been done. I'm gonna have to do something with that. When I went to go drop Hazel off at the babysitter this morning, she said, you do look a little tired. I'm like, that's because I don't have makeup on. When I don't have makeup on, I look tired. I'm still not sure what I think about that eye base. One of the things that I've been in love with, obsessed with, all over again, this isn't the first time I've been obsessed with this, but I've rediscovered it again and I am re-obsessed with it, is the television show Covert Affairs. Have any of you guys ever seen that show? Do you remember that show? It is a show about um, American spies, the CIA. And the main character is a girl, I think her real name is Piper Paraboo. She was in, um, I cannot remember, I will indicate here somewhere when I figure it out. I cannot remember what it was. But anyways, she's just like girl next door, beautiful, like natural, gorgeous, beautiful, and she is a spy. And I want to be her so bad in life. I'm not gonna lie, I want to be her. And watching that show Covert Affairs is 
my fantasy. I mean, it's it's my dream. It's my younger me. I don't know. I watch Covert Affairs and I think, oh, I wanted to be that. I wish I could have done that. That seems so cool. I just love that show. Do any of you guys watch Covert Affairs? Have you seen it? I did not see it at all the first time when it actually aired. I was not aware of that show being around at all. And I don't even remember what year it was that it aired. But I was at work a few years later and I was talking to a coworker and she's an older coworker. She's about, she could, she could be my mother. She's about 25 years older than me. And she said, um, have you ever seen the show Covert Affairs? And I was like, no. And she's like, I think you would like that show. That show reminds me of you. And I was like, really? So of course I found it on USA. They were playing reruns on USA and I started watching it and I watched as many episodes as I could find on rerun on the channel USA. And USA is a cable network here in the US. <laughs> And um, I watched a bunch of the shows and then the season, the series ended. I watched the whole series and I just was left with an emptiness in my heart, but I had watched every show I could and then I forgot about it. And recently my husband subscribed to the Peacock Network, which is a streaming network for the channel that originally own, that owns the show Covert Affairs. So I now have access to the whole series of Covert Affairs through this Peacock Network and I'm watching it all over again. I would rather watch that show again for the second time than do anything else in life right now. Like that's how much I love that show. I don't wanna do anything else. I don't wanna work, I don't wanna sleep, I don't wanna eat, I don't wanna do makeup. I wanna watch that show all day long. It's so good. What am I gonna put on my lid on top of this crazy base? I, I could go back in with foam, but that seems kind of boring. So that leaves me with honey or copper pearl. This is honey. This is copper pearl. I'm thinking copper pearl. Why not? I'm gonna put copper pearl all over my eyelid. I could go with something totally different, of course. I could go with fairy tale or steel wool or the green moss. What should I do? I wanna keep it spring, keep it spring. I'm gonna go with fairy tale. Why not? I'm gonna put fairy tale. This one just looks very gray in the pan. I'm hoping that there's something more to it than just a kind of weird gray shade um, with a name like fairy tale. I'm hoping it comes off like a purpley. I don't know. I should probably swatch it, but we'll just put it on the eyes and see what happens. Holy cow. Definitely some purple to it. I just don't want it to be too dark. So yeah, if you have not seen Covert Affairs yet, I would recommend it. It's such a good show. Annie Walker. It's hard to believe, but even though my mind is saying this is the most far-fetched television show ever made, the other part of me loves that she's so all-knowing. Like she's like 25 or something and she knows everything about everything. I don't know how that's possible. I didn't know everything about everything when I was 25. I'm way older than that now and I still don't know everything about everything. But she's like all-knowing and I kind of love that. Brains, brawn, beauty, she's got it all. So I guess the question is, did that aqua base do anything other than make my eyelids look really creepy and old? Cause not really. I kind of like this combination. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and pop foam on my inner corner.
Is it coming together? We'll see. Should I go back in with spice one last time? Maybe. I'll think about it. Let's do highlighter next. I pulled out my ABH Glow Kit in Sugar, and this was one of the Spring Shop My Stash products. Which one should I go for? I think I'm gonna go for this one up here called Gumdrop. It looks very um, tan in the pan. Looks like a tan shade, but as you can see in certain lights, it has a lot of pink to it. I bought this because of Instagram. This is definitely a product I purchased strictly because everybody on Instagram was raving about it. The consensus among everybody that I talked to was that you will love it. Like, I don't care who you are. I don't care what your skin tone is. I don't care how light you are or how dark you are. You will find something in this palette you love. And it's definitely one of those products that I bought and then put to the side thinking I need to use up some of my older stuff first before I can enjoy this nice new thing. And it's still basically brand new. Like I don't even remember ever using this. I'm sure I used a shade or two, but I don't feel like I know that palette very well at all. And it's definitely one of those products that I think, oh, I'll put it to the side while I'm panning something old. And when I finish that old product, then I'll get to this newer thing or all of the old products. And I'm really trying to change that mindset because if I spend my entire life trying to use up the oldest stuff I have, I'll never get to enjoy anything new. So, and really, I mean, is it new? How long have I had it? I could probably go through my Instagram and find the post where I held it. It's not new. I'm really trying to figure out the balance with that as far as project panning goes because it's so hard to decide do I want to work on something that's the oldest thing that I have and move it out or do I want to work on something newer and ignore the older stuff I should be getting out? I don't know. It's so hard to figure out. I know we're all struggling with that, but you're not alone. I'm struggling with it too. Hey. I feel like that's not really showing up on me. Are you guys seeing it? I think because that base color is so dark, I don't think it's too dark. It kind of blends into my skin. It's kind of bothering me that I don't have any eyeliner on. I feel like I need eyeliner ASAP. Okay, for blush, I'm going to use this guy right here. This is a Stila blush. I feel like I probably bought this off of Holt Look. I'm not sure. It says Pretty in Pink Blush. Stila does sell their products on Holt Look pretty often, at least they used to. I have not shopped on Holt Look in quite a while. I definitely had some unhealthy shopping habits when it came to Holt Look. But I have used this blush one time. It did have like a pretty um, spray over on top of this before. And I've wiped off the spray over and all that's left is m these two matte pink shades. So, whoa, powdery. Ooh, it's pink. Just got a call from a telemarketer. I feel like my cell phone has been hijacked by spam callers. There was this nice few years when um, most of us had transitioned from using our home phones to using cell phones and it was a nice reprieve for a while from spam callers because one of the reasons we decided to get rid of our home line altogether is that the only person, the only people calling us were telemarketers. And so everybody kind of learned that if they wanted to get a hold of me, they had to call me on my cell phone anyways. But telemarketers weren't calling my cell phone. And now all I get are telemarketing calls on my cell phone and telemarketing text messages. I get like a group text from 20 people whose first 
three, four, five, five digits of their phone number are the same as mine. And the only difference is the last two. Like clearly they're just going down the line and spamming through text message. It's so annoying. I really enjoyed that short break from telemarketers. Oh, look at that blush. It's gorgeous. I love it. I love it. All right, I think I am going to go back in with that spice shade and add a little bit more to my crease. Hopefully I don't go overboard. I just feel like it's a very bottom heavy look right now. That's better, right? All right, I'm gonna go back in with the peach and blend it out in the transition one more time. Okay, I think I'm happy. I'm gonna throw on some eyeliner and mascara, some setting powder. I'm gonna spray my face down and I'll be right back for the lip product. Be right back. Okay guys, I'm back. Really quickly, I figured I would show you the liner and mascara that I used. For my liner, I went ahead and used my Stila Stay All Day. No, my Stila Smudge Stick Waterproof Eyeliner in Tetra. I rolled this into my 50 Shades of Purple project and I have a usage goal on this, so one use down. I, I don't feel like it's really showing up in my waterline too much. It's subtle. I don't feel like it's really showing up on my upper lash line either, but it's a nice color. I guess I'm just so used to using a very dark black um, eyeliner that this is gonna take some getting used to because I feel like it looks like I'm not wearing any eyeliner at all, but I am. It's this. For my mascara, I've been wanting to find a way to talk to you guys about this mascara for a while. This is the L'Oreal Telescopic Carbon Black Mascara, and I have no recollection of which beauty guru recommended this product to me. I don't remember where I first heard about this, but the only reason I would have bought this is because somebody recommended it. And I was shocked when I first opened this. I've been using this for about a month, maybe two months now. And when I took it out of the container, I could not believe this wand. It is like this weird rubber stick. I don't think I've ever seen a mascara like this before. And I loved it and then I didn't love it and I love it again. But this is a really good mascara. When I first started using it, I loved it. I thought it was really good. It lengthens and holds a curl, which makes me think that this might be an Emily Noel recommendation, even though I don't remember her recommending it. But I know those are two things she really likes too, lengthening and holding a curl. Then after about two weeks of using this, I felt like it was really clumping my lashes together and it made my eyelashes look like I had five very long eyelashes instead of a bunch of long eyelashes and I put it away for a week or two and I went back to it and it's been working really well ever since. I know sometimes mascaras do that. I was afraid to use it on my lower lash line initially because I was worried it was gonna give me raccoon eyes. There's nothing on this that actually states that it's waterproof and typically I like to use waterproof mascaras for my lower lash line but I did start using this as a lower lash line mascara as well because the brush is so small. It's really ideal for accessing my lower lashes and I love it. I love it. This is the only mascara I'm currently using, which is very rare. At times, I've used up to three mascaras every day. One for my lower lashes, one for volumizing, one for lengthening, one for holding a curl. Like I will just layer up the mascaras until each one does their job. But this one, I feel, does it all. I really like it. So I wanted to talk about this. Unfortunately, L'Oreal, as you know, is not a cruelty-free brand. So I don't know if I would be repurchasing this. And I have about a million mascaras 
to go through first before I even have to think about it. But I wanted to let you guys know what I've been using it because I really have been enjoying it. And it's affordable. It's drugstore. For my lips, I'm just going to throw on this lip gloss. This is the MAC Mineralized Glass Lip Gloss in Eloquently Elegant. This is just a milky pink gloss that I shot my stash for in that spring shot my stash video. So I'm excited to use it. Plus, I'm just going to be around the house for the next few hours. I'm not going anywhere. I'll probably be drinking coffee nonstop. So I didn't want to like put too much on my lips. I didn't want to go overboard. Mm. Frosting. I wonder if I should put on a lip liner. Oh well. These milky nude lip glosses used to be my jam, but I don't know about it anymore. I feel like it's not doing me any justice. Hang on, I'll be right back. I have my Avon lip liner in soft wine. It's been in my A to Z project for a couple years and I'm just going to add some definition back in. That's better. I actually really like the combination of these two. I like them. All right, what's going on with my hair? My hair is crazy today. I'm going to get it done. Not this weekend, not the day after you see this video but next weekend. So I guess it's going to be time for me to decide if I'm gonna keep it pink, which will fade into this rose gold color, or if I should go back to purple, assuming that purple is available to me at that time. Okay, my hair is very weird from being up in a bun all morning long, but this is the finished look right here. I like it. Is it the most spring look I've ever done? No, it's not. I don't know what this is. I guess it's spring. I don't know. Um, I need some concealer for that. Out of all the products that I revisited today, the one that I'm the most suspicious about is this one right here. This is the Makeup Forever Aqua Cream in number 13. <sighs> I need to go back and watch some old YouTube videos kind of demonstrating this product and seeing how other people are using it. And I need to give it some thought. This is a really good candidate for Project 10 uses, so I could use it 10 times and really get to know it a little bit better. I ended up covering it up today with this purpley eyeshadow, so all I feel like this really did is made my eyelids look a little bit crepier than they did before I put this on. I don't think this is meant to be an eye base. I kind of have the feeling that this is meant to be a standalone eyeshadow, like a cream to powder eyeshadow. So you don't need to put anything over it. But because I was playing with this new palette, I felt the need to put something over it so that I could play with the new palette. So I think I didn't put it on right, but I want to get to know this product some more again and get more familiar with it, maybe in Project 10 uses. And, um, and I'll go from there. But out of everything I used today, this was the one that I have the worst feelings about. The three powder products, my Glow Kit and Sugar, my Lorac Mega Pro 4, and the Stila Blush, I absolutely loved. I had so much fun playing with all of these. I love all of them. For the Glow Kit, I used the shade Gumdrop, which is that kind of duochrome beige to pink shade. 
I loved the shadows that I used in the Lorac palette. I was pleasantly surprised by the shade Foam. I don't know, what is my new obsession about like white eyeshadows? And this blush is gorgeous. This is like the most perfect springtime blush ever. I just feel like somebody just came along and pinched my cheeks. I love it so much. And I would have to say that my feelings about this MAC lip gloss are not as great as they used to be. Love the formula. Very comfortable, not sticky at all, but I do not consider this a standalone lip gloss anymore. Whereas maybe in the past, I would have just swiped this on and been done. I don't feel like I can get away with that anymore. I felt like I looked really strange with just this product on by itself and that I need to pair it with a lip liner or a lipstick to make it more wearable because on its own, I did not think that was a good look. I don't know. Maybe you, maybe you thought it was, but... I didn't think it looked as good as it does now with this lip liner. So because of that, I'm not rating this as like an all-time favorite because it doesn't stand alone. But there is definitely a place in my stash for lip glosses, especially ones that pair well with lip liners because I have a ton of lip liners I need to pan. So if I can find a go-to combo with a lip gloss and a lip liner and I could work on both at the same time, that's great. And for that reason, I might put this in a project so that I could pair this with that soft wine lip liner that I'm just not reaching for very consistently. But look at this, I love this. This is a great combo, so. I love the combination of these two together. I think they are very pretty. And that's all that's on my lips is this lip liner and this lip gloss. All right, guys, that is it for this Dust Collectors. Get ready with me. Don't forget to check out Verity's channel and see what her look turned out like and which products she chose for her Get Ready With Me. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.